In this video, we're going to find new candlestick patterns that have the best performance for any market with a genetic algorithm. The defined and celebrated patterns we've all heard about often do not work or are not optimal in practice. I'll show you how to evolve sets of candlestick patterns that provide optimal performance. Let's build the algorithm. We have four input series that make up the candlestick data, the open, high, low, and close. We will use these to build our patterns. The genetic algorithm is given a collection of candlestick data as input. It searches this data for the optimal patterns. First, we have to define the schema for the patterns we seek to optimize. Here is an example pattern. The letters denote the series, open, high, low, and close. The number denotes the lag, zero means the current candle, one means the previous candle, two is two candles ago, and so on. This pattern in English reads as the current candle's open is greater than the prior candle's low, and the current candle's close is less than the prior candle's high. We combine multiple comparison rules to build patterns. The candlestick pattern has two hyperparameters, the pattern size and the number of candles. The pattern size determines how many comparison rules will make up a pattern. The number of candles is the maximum lag value, how many of the most recent candles we will potentially consider. We generate random comparison rules and append them together to build random patterns. When generating rules, it's important to check for illogical comparisons, such as comparing the current high to the current low. If a pattern has duplicate rules, we replace them. With the pattern schema defined, let's look at the genetic algorithm. The genetic algorithm has six main steps. Initialization, evaluation, elitism, parent selection, reproduction, mutation. A pass through each of these steps is called a generation. After a generation is complete, the next generation is started at step two, evaluation. The first step of a genetic algorithm is initialization. We set our hyperparameters and generate several random patterns to build our initial population. Now we move on to the evaluation step. We evaluate the performance of a given candlestick pattern with a fitness function. To compute any fitness function, we first loop through each candle in the dataset and check if the pattern is present. If the pattern is present, we record the next log return, the change from the current close to the next close. If the pattern is not present, we record a zero. This gives us a return series concurrent with the candle series in the dataset. If we are searching for patterns for trading short, we flip the signs of the returns. We use this return series to compute fitness functions. Three fitness functions that are reasonable to assess these patterns are total return, profit factor, and the Martin ratio. The fitness function selected will cause different patterns to be found as each prioritizes different behavior. I require fitness functions to only output values that are greater than or equal to zero. This requirement is important during parent selection. If a pattern is not profitable, its fitness is set to zero. Our first fitness function is the total return. It is calculated by summing all of the returns. If the sum of returns is negative, we set its fitness to zero. Using total return as a fitness function will prioritize patterns that occur often. Trading patterns that optimize total returns leads to a large amount of time exposed to the market. The total return has no concern for risk, so overall I believe this fitness function to be the worst of the three I'll present. Our next fitness function is the profit factor. It is calculated by summing the winning returns and summing the losing returns and taking the ratio between the two. The raw profit factor will be above 1 when the pattern is profitable and below 1 when unprofitable. To conform to our greater than or equal to 0 requirement for fitness functions, I take the natural logarithm of the ratio and floor negative values at 0. Profit factor as a fitness function will prioritize patterns that occur rarely with a higher reward risk ratio. Because rarer patterns tend to be prioritized, I require the pattern to occur at least a minimum number of times. I use 2.5% of the length of the dataset. If a tested pattern occurs less than the minimum number of times, I set its fitness to zero. The profit factor can be susceptible to overfitting, especially for finding patterns on smaller datasets. Overall, I believe the profit factor to be a better fitness function than total return. Our final fitness function is the Martin ratio, which is sometimes called the ulcer performance index. It is calculated by dividing the total return by the ulcer index. The ulcer index is calculated by summing the squared drawdown at each candle in the dataset. This causes the fitness function to be punished by both the length and depth of drawdowns. The developer of the Martin Ratio and Ulcer Index has an excellent article describing its properties and implementation that I have linked in the description. Patterns that have smaller drawdowns and recover quickly from drawdowns will be prioritized. Like the profit factor, I require a minimum number of occurrences for this fitness function, but this requirement comes into play much less often for the Martin Ratio. Overall, I found patterns that maximize this fitness function tend to perform the best out of sample, I believe this to be the best fitness function presented, although the profit factor and potentially total return have a time and place for use. Obviously, these are not the only three fitness functions, but they cover a wide range of applications. 
the fitness function selected will drastically alter the patterns the genetic algorithm finds. Now that we have discussed fitness functions, let's evaluate the population we generated during the initialization step. We assign each pattern with a fitness value and sort the patterns by their fitness. Moving on to elitism. Elitism selects the current best patterns and copies them for the next generation. We can select either the single best or a small percentage of the best performing patterns. This way, the best performing pattern found so far will always remain at the top of the population. Elitism should be used sparingly. If too many of the best patterns are copied, the population evolution could stagnate and suboptimal patterns could be found. I prefer to copy just the single best pattern. Now for parent selection. We select two patterns to serve as parents. They reproduce and create two children patterns. To select parents, we first sum all the fitness values in the population. We generate a random value between zero and the pool sum. We create a new sum, the selection sum. Then we loop through each pattern in the pool and add the pattern's fitness to the selection sum. The first pattern, where the selection sum is greater than or equal to our random value, is selected as a parent. This method makes patterns with higher fitness more likely to be selected for reproduction. If a pattern has a fitness of zero, it will have a 0% chance of reproducing. Survival of the fittest. We repeat this process again to select a second parent. Now that we have two parents selected, we can create the children. Moving us to the next step, reproduction. Our pattern size here is three, meaning we have three comparison rules. We select a random split point between the comparison rules. With three comparison rules, there are two potential split points. We'll use the first split point in this example. The first child takes the comparison rules from the first parent before the split point, and the comparison rules from the second parent after the split point. The second child takes the comparison rules from the second parent before the split point, and the comparison rules from the first parent after the split point. We repeat this process of parent selection and reproduction until we have filled the next generation's population. This process causes comparison rules yielding superior performance to be spread throughout the population, while comparison rules that yield lesser performance are bred out of the population. The final step is mutation. I employ two types of mutation. The first mutation changes one characteristic of one comparison rule. For example, changing one of the series or one of the lag values. I apply this mutation to patterns in the population with a 5% chance. The other mutation replaces an entire pattern with a newly generated random pattern. I apply this with a 2% chance. The patterns that were copied to the next generation from elitism are exempt from mutations to avoid damaging the best pattern found so far. Mutation prevents the population from stagnating. It provides fresh comparison rules to the population. As the mutation chance increases, the genetic algorithm regresses into a random search, so they are best kept low. After these steps, we have completed a generation. We start again at the evaluation step to move to the next generation. We can repeat this evolutionary process for as many generations as we wish, but we get diminishing returns as the algorithm converges on a best pattern. There are a few options to decide when to stop the evolution, such as stopping after a fixed number of generations or stopping if we have not improved the best pattern found in a fixed number of generations. In my experiments, the stopping criteria is not very important for the candlestick pattern application. I opt for the simple fixed number of generations. The population size, the number of generations, the elitism number, the mutation chance, the fresh pattern chance are all parameters of the genetic optimization procedure. I used these values, I think they are reasonable. Let's run the genetic algorithm on some real data. I ran it on a year of hourly Bitcoin tether data throughout all of 2018. The Martin ratio is used as the fitness function. I use a pattern size of 3 and consider the 3 most recent candles. We are searching for patterns that trade long. As the program runs, we can see that the best fitness tends to increase once every few generations, but the average fitness of the population increases nearly every generation. The genetic algorithm found this pattern. Here are some example positive matches for the pattern. Its in-sample performance is impressive as expected, but is this pattern truly optimal? Probably not. The number of possible patterns is enormous, and genetic algorithms are inherently random. But at the very least, we can say that this pattern is pretty good on the in-sample data. Is this the only high-performing pattern? No. We can find additional high-performing patterns using the genetic algorithm by modifying our fitness function. We find our first pattern normally, like we just did, but save the returns we used to calculate the fitness function of the first pattern. Then we start the genetic algorithm again. But after computing the fitness of any pattern on the second run, 
We also find the Pearson correlation between the first runs pattern returns and the returns of the pattern currently being evaluated. The correlation returns a value between negative one and one, one being a perfect correlation, the exact same pattern. We adjust the fitness of the pattern by one minus the correlation value. If the patterns are exactly the same, the fitness will be multiplied by zero. This forces the genetic algorithm to evolve patterns that are uncorrelated to the first pattern. For evolving additional patterns, we use the maximum correlation between the currently evaluated pattern and any of the prior found patterns. So let's use this method to find five high-performing patterns. Here we are, we have five patterns with minimal correlation. I combine them by taking a long position when any of the five patterns are found. Here is the in-sample performance of each of the patterns and the combined version. Before we get too excited, it's important to remember that these are in-sample results. There is certainly a data mining bias at play. The genetic algorithm presented is quite powerful and we'll find patterns in noise along with authentic patterns. Let's perform a Monte Carlo permutation test to find if these patterns are just artifacts of noise. We'll create 100 permutations of the candlestick data for 2018. In these permutations, legitimate candlestick patterns will be destroyed, leaving only noise remaining. We run the same genetic algorithm to find five patterns on each of the permutations and combine them. We will compare the five pattern combined performance on real data to the five pattern combined performance we find on the permuted data. If the genetic algorithm is picking up on true patterns in the candlestick data, then the performance on the real data should be superior to the performance we find on the permuted data. Here is the five pattern combined performance from each 2018 permutation plotted as histograms. The real performance of each metric is plotted with a red vertical line. We can see that the real Martin ratio is ahead of almost every permutation. Ideally, it would be ahead of all of them. The real total return, the numerator of the Martin ratio, is higher than all permutations. The real profit factor is in the center of the permutations profit factor distribution, but this isn't the figure we are optimizing. Overall, this test suggests that the market may have some legitimate candlestick patterns, however, they are not much stronger than what we would typically find in noise. Let's do a walk forward test to find if the patterns the genetic algorithm finds work out of sample. We will find the five best patterns on 2018 data and use them in 2019. Then we will find the five best patterns on 2019 data and use them on 2020, and so on. I did this process twice, fitting five long patterns and five short patterns for each year. Here is the out of sample results. Both the long and short patterns did end up profitable, which of course is a good sign, but the performance is obviously quite weaker than what we saw on the in sample data. Not surprising. I also show the results for both the long and short patterns combined. If both a long pattern and a short pattern occur on the same candle, they cancel each other out. No position is taken. Here is the in-sample Martin ratio and the out-of-sample Martin ratio for each year. The patterns do seem to hold up out-of-sample to a small extent. Every year out-of-sample was profitable except long patterns in 2022, but the edge they offer is quite weak. Something I find interesting is that the in-sample performance for both the long and short patterns decreases nearly every year. It seems that what little edge these candlestick patterns have are slowly being arbitraged out of the market, but this is just speculation. Here's the same walk forward test, but for Ethereum, everything is kept the same except the symbol. The out-of-sample results are still profitable, but it appears to be a little worse than Bitcoin, but seeing a market prediction scheme work on multiple markets is always a good sign. We've studied optimal candlestick patterns built by comparing the recent open, high, low, and close values with each other. The results suggest that this might be a small edge in the market. A potential shortcoming of these patterns is that we only test if a certain value is greater than or less than another value. More valuable information may exist in the difference. For example, how much two lows differ, rather than just one being higher or lower. Eventually, I will expand the scope of the patterns considered to see if this is the case. The fact that there is some performance in the candlestick patterns investigated is encouraging. The results I showed are highly theoretical. They did not include trading fees or slippage. Binance has recently removed trading fees from their Bitcoin and Ethereum pairs, so only slippage really remains a factor. Overall, I am not going to be deploying these patterns to any of my live trading. They are simply not strong enough, but I think this is a reasonable avenue for further research. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment. Bye.